Hey, well, obviously not the result you guys wanted yesterday, but what was kind of the points of emphasis to try and improve on in practice? Um, I think it's, it was a lot of things to improve, you know, I think that's what I think we can get from that game. Um, of course, we didn't play as, as, as good as we, uh, we want to. There was a lot of little mistakes and uh, miscommunication and we're not connected. And I think that's something we are, uh, we talked about it today and we're going to try to improve for the next games. Josh wants to know, what did the film show about the Wizards' difficulties last night with their middle pick and roll defense? Um, I think is what I, what I said in a, I said before, it was a lot of miscommunication and uh, we, we had some guys thinking we're doing something, other guys thinking we're doing something else. And then you don't have that uh, connection that we need on defense to, to guard a pick and roll uh, even more when you play against guys like uh, Garland and Allen, which has this uh, really good connection, Ricky Rubio, which is a good, very good passer. Um, and their spacing was good. And so I think it was, it was uh, uh, I think a miscommunication, misconnection from our team and also can take away uh, the way they play, you know, so uh, like I said, we talked about it. We're going to try to get better and and, uh, uh, and go from there. Offensively, what do you think is holding your team back from its offensive output last night or last season? <clears throat> um, it's hard to compare. It's, it's, it's two different teams, you know, uh, from last season to this season. But I think uh, what we, we got to do better is uh, I think we're not shooting the ball well, so that – takes or confidence and sometimes you miss one two shots and then uh, when you have an open shot you don't take it and uh, I think that slowed down our offense and I think we just got to stay confident and start uh, uh, taking the the, the shots where uh, we all know it's a good shot so I think um, we had stretches we've had games that we had really good offense and we play uh unselfish and we move the ball and we take good shots and i think that that also helps our defense you know uh, i think some days we we're not making shots we're not playing good offense we just stop playing defense or the give them um uh, open layups or uh, fast breaks so i think uh it's a it's a both way thing you can't just blame the defense or you can't just blame the offense uh, of course we all we always say defense we don't have days, you know, you just come and you, if you do the right thing, you're going to have a good defense. But I think it goes both ways and uh, our offense, uh, I think, reflect our defense. It's our def defense reflects our offense too. We'll end on that note. Thanks. We're good? Yeah, we're good. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, uh, every game there's, there's not, not everything is going to be perfect, you know? So we, uh, like last game was our pick and roll. We didn't uh, press the ball enough. We, they were playing with a lot of freedom and that gives the, the ball handler, uh, all the options they want, you know, they could shoot the floater, they could hit the corner, they could hit the roller. So, um, I think that's something we've struggled yesterday and a couple other games too uh and we we definitely gotta gotta do better um but like i said there's always something and our team has this competitiveness and this uh you know chasing to be great and chasing to do everything right so sometimes i feel like we overreact when we uh when we don't do something good in the game you know uh we all talking which is great we, we have a good uh we always have good conversations about things we have we have to get better but if, to answer your question, I think uh, our pick and roll defense can can get better. Well, Fred Van Vliet, uh, is a really tough <clears throat> against this team for a long time. Uh, the last time you guys played here, 33. What would you guys do differently to kind of make that? I think be more aggressive on the, on the ball. Uh, like I say, fix our communication issues and uh, making sure everybody's on the same page because uh, a guy guys like that, is, it doesn't take only one player to guard it. He, he has to be... Um, the whole team, you know, we have games like uh, Memphis against uh, Jaw that J 
that he's a great player, but we defended him well because everybody did their job and we were connected. So I think uh, that's gonna be that's gonna be the key. It's hard to say, you know, I don't know, Pope might be on him. I don't know who's gonna be guarding, but it's hard to put all the the responsibility on on, on one guy. And so it's gotta be a, a aggressiveness on the ball and then everybody else helping and, and ready to you know uh, cover whatever they they try to get on offense. <laughs> Yeah, I think um, uh, we're taking good shots most of the times. Um, I think it's a, it's a confidence thing or uh, we have good shooters. We've had stretches where, uh, you know, we were making shots and everybody was uh, uh, aggressive on that, on, on that end of the offense. Um, but I don't know, it's, it's a thing that it's hard to say why we're not making shots or, you know, why, because we are taking good shots. Um, maybe sometimes I think our passes could, could be better. You know, sometimes you, somebody's open, but if he doesn't get a great pass, it's a harder shot uh, than it was supposed to be. So I think it, that would be something probably that um, can affect the, the shooting. But I, I mean, we all trust each other. You know, that's something that we've always say, you know, keep taking your shots. You, you're taking good shots. So I think um, it's a number of thing, you know, if we, I don't think we're going to be shooting um, that bad for too long. So we just got to keep being aggressive and shooting the ball. Well, I think it just shows that, you know, it validates what we're talking about. Um, and that's where you find trying to find the consistency to, you know, see that every night. It doesn't happen, obviously, but um, sometimes you go through those, those stretches where you're struggling, you're trying to figure it out. Um, and we haven't, we haven't played our best basketball, you know, in the last 10 games. You know, the first 13 games were pretty good, you know, and obviously defensively we were, uh, we were solid. And I think we've seen a lot of slippage, some of that lack of practice time. Um, I haven't had a chance to get a lot of reps, but, you know, that, that's no excuse. We have to continue to find ways to get better, and we, we can't, you know, sit here and say, well, okay, we, we, we used to do it. <laughs> we got to find a way to continue to trend in the right direction. Clearly pick and roll. I mean, that, that's an easy one. And, you know, sadly, that's a vast, you know, chunk of the, uh, of the game, you know, whether it's the initial action or it's a play after the action breaks down, you know, teams flow into it. You may guard, you know, on average, you know, 50 plus pick and rolls in, in one night. So if, if we're not clean in our coverage, um, in our spots, um, if our communication is slow, we're, you know, it's going to be problematic. When you play the Raptors, what stands out about them is the turnover battle. Yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so when you think about that going into a matchup, what's going to be the priority? Uh, to, to your point, though, we gotta. There's got to be a priority to have ball security, value possessions, um, and that's got to be purpose in everything leading up to that. It's uh, no auto passes. It's owning our spots, being physical, our setups, timing of our cuts, our screens. And all those things seem, you know, uh, somewhat amateurish, but they're important because if you don't do those things, it lends to their strength. They're going to turn you over. And once they turn you over, uh, you're in trouble. If we are able to execute, um, they, they've had a hard time guard. You know, they thrive when they're able to team, turn teams over. Um, and that just gives them life, gives them momentum. We want to try and, you know, take that away. Coach Van Lee had 33 points the last time you guys faced him. He's been visible for this team for a long time. Um, how do you guys look at that? Well, he's a really good player. I mean, obviously, you want to get a guy like that out of his rhythm. We've got to set the tone and kind of, you know, get him under control early. Um, once a guy like that shooting into a big basket, it's it's tough to, uh, you know, put that fire out. So can we make it tough on him? Um, you know, uh, give him different looks at some point, try to uh, – 
keep them off balance, but to give them a steady diet of anything, I think is it's a slow, painful death. Is the back to back coming up uh, as far as Beckford goes? Um, we'll still, uh, you know, rest him one of those two games. We'll make that decision as we kind of get closer. But um, there are two more back-to-backs this month. Uh, so we'll look at it through the, the remainder of this month. And, uh, you know, the one positive out of that is we, we, we could see an uptick in his minutes overall. But, um, you know, as far as the back-to-backs, I still think we're going to be cautious with it. You know, still 11 months out post-surgery, which is in itself amazing uh, that he's, you know, playing um, – the way he has. So we still want to be cautious, be mindful of that. Uh, and, you know, we'll read it probably in the next four weeks. And the uh, last one for me, what are you seeing in terms of development from the CBA guy and, and also Isaiah Todd? And what kind of makes the, the prospects a little bit I mean, I like where they are. I mean, I, those guys have uh, had played, they've played good minutes, you know, for the go-go. Um, and the best part about it is there's, you know, the synergy within uh, philosophy, style. Uh, so I think it can help translate. You know, I think uh, you know, the hard part at times is, you know, they play, get called up, don't necessarily get the reps, you know, with us, um, but they're still learning. They're still understanding what we're trying to, to do and trying to process some of that. Uh, but um, I think the more reps they can get, the more in-game minutes that they can log, I think it helps them. Could you determine whether he will not? He will not. And then part of it is because of, you know, you're playing three games in four nights, so... Uh, early start tomorrow, so there's no shoot around. We'll have a ballroom walkthrough, uh, so really no court time, you know, and, and the lack of uh, facilities that you know, be on the floor to be in the weight room and get what he needs. Um, the second night of a back to back, once again, there's no shoot around. There's another ballroom walkthrough, um, and obviously that third day of the four game trip or three four day trip rather uh, is an off day. So it's like you know, does it make make a whole lot of sense to? have him on that trip if he doesn't have access to the things that he probably should uh, should have. Do you expect him to start going five on five or something like that tomorrow night? Yeah, no, for sure. I think it uh, um, we'll still have to, you know, limit it from, you know, probably one on one, two on two on up, but uh, we can't throw him into five on five right now. I think a lot of it is our energy and effort level at times. Um, I still think that group's still trying to figure each other out. Um, you know, you see the the difference. I think with uh, with Brad and Spencer when they're you know one guy's in, one guy's out. We've, we've got to find a way to get uh, those guys on the same page, especially get uh, Spencer going early. Um, you know, I think he's trying to set the table for those other guys, but uh, we got to find a way to kind of get him involved and not be as uh, as passive. I think it's I think it's probably peripheral. I don't I don't see any issue. He's a full participant uh, today, so I don't think it's any issue. Josh wants to know what's the film show about the Middleton before we had last night? It was bad. Um, it's just uh, we weren't on the same page. You know, I think it, it starts at the point. You, you know, if we're not getting the communication, we can't get into the ball. Uh, we're not um, at the level you know, the way we should be. We were, we were not in our protection spots. So, uh, you know, one problem to get the other problem um, and it kind of snowballed. So um, lengthy film session, uh, obviously a lot of things were discussed, but uh, there seemed to be more clarity coming out of that. Neil wants to know, last night Spencer said, we got a lot of guys trying to press the go button right now. So somebody's going to not have the rock. We want to change or be contained at that point goal. Is it on you as the coach to call more plays for Spencer or for him on his own to be? Uh, yes, and in, in, in both those areas. So, you know, I think I've talked to him quite a bit about it. Um, and he, a lot of the stuff we have, it gets everybody involved. But, you know, he wants to play a lot of pick and roll, which I think he's, he excels at. Um, the issue is we want to stay away from the static, you know, pick and rolls where it's just uh, no action, no fir- it's all first side pick and roll. Um, I think he – benefits most when that ball's changed sides a couple times and the defense has shifted. Now you get into a third side pick and roll where he can attack and he's got space to play and move. Um, but I think it's, it's also, you know, our overall approach. Are we ready to you play from the, you know, from the tip?
you know, I think it, at times we, it's predicated on whether we're making shots. I think that that kind of depends on how aggressive, how in lo locked in and in tune we are on the defensive end. That can't be the case. It's got to be, this is what we do. We're consistent with our defensive energy, our execution, whether we make shots or not. You know, I think you, we, that allows us to stay in games. But we started to get frustrated with the, the lack of offensive production. Then we got consumed, I think, with uh, some of the foul calls, foul calls, no, no calls. And uh, that, that just kind of sidetracked us. And we fell into that trap of arguing with the officials and it really got us uh, away from our game.